David here with the Barbecue Lab, bringing you the best outdoor cooking gear and techniques to help you win your weekend. Traeger is the number one seller of pellet grills in the world, and today we're going to do our six month review of the Traeger Renegade Pro Pellet Grill coming up. Traeger grills can be found online, in big box stores, and almost everywhere you look. Today we're taking a look at the Traeger Renegade Pro, and it retails for a price of right around $649. Now this grill enables you to put 18 pounds of pellets in the hopper, and that's enough to be able to get you through an overnight cook, or any brisket, or any of the longer meats that I can think of, primarily when you look at about one pound per hour for a cook. So you've got about three quarters of a day in pellet capacity, which is nice for a smoker of this size. Now there's an auto start ignition on this grill, which is one of the things that's super nice about pellet grills, primarily because you're not worried about starting up the fire. The pellet grill handles all of that for you. So there's a hot rod inside that ignites the pellets, and when it ignites the pellets, it turns back off. And it's lovely to not have to worry about the pellets staying ignited during your cook. Now, one of the things I really like about the hopper on this particular model is there's a clean out on the back of the unit. The clean out enables you to swing this little uh, door open and all of the pellets will come flooding out of the hopper. Now, the only issue I have with this is that the legs kind of get in the way. So depending on the size of the bucket you use to be able to clean out your pellets, you might end up with pellets all over the floor, just like we do. Um, so that's one of the things that I would love to see uh, something a little bit better. If you had one of those flexible cutting boards, that you could put underneath and hold that to be able to kind of funnel them into your bucket, that might work better. But I know that whenever we try to take a bucket and stick it underneath, we end up with pellets on the ground inevitably. Now, <clears throat> on this pellet smoker, we can get three racks of ribs at a time laying horizontally. We can also get three chickens or even 16 burgers, and that's what Traeger quotes on their site. And we found that to be true. We can get any of those on this grill uh, as well. The controller on this unit is not a PID controller, and that's okay. I find that with some PID controllers, I actually get less smoke depending on the algorithm that they use to run their controller. And with this one, I actually like the controller on this grill. It has a plus and minus 15 degree swing in the temperature that you're trying to keep, and that's okay with me. I haven't had anything that I'm cooking that has to have within a you know one or two degree swing, and that's completely fine for the everyday outdoor backyard cook, of which I am. Now there's no wireless capability on this model, and that's something that in older pellet grills was the norm. Having wireless capability has only come around in the last few years as something you're seeing on models even down to this price range, but I've been able to use this for the last six months as our primary pellet smoker here at the Barbecue Lab without any problems. If I wanted to know temperatures on the unit, all I would do is I would take an external uh, air probe and I would take an external meat probe, stick it into the grill, and I have one or two of those that will actually go to the cloud and shoot, shoot that information to my phone. So one of these models without wireless capability is completely fine for me as a backyard cook. Now, the body style on this unit is a sawhorse chassis. And if you've ever used a sawhorse in the garage, you're gonna see that you know it has four legs that are sitting at almost a triangular angle. I feel like this grill is one of the more stable ones that I've ever used, primarily because of the way that the chassis is designed. Now, the grill grates on this unit are porcelain coated, and if you've ever used porcelain coated grill grates, you know that the cleanup is super easy. One of my favorite things to cook on the Traeger is a couple of pork butts. And we'll cook up two or three pork butts and we'll hand them out to the neighbors and we'll be able to give them um, some great barbecue because our philosophy is if you have to smell it you should be able to eat it as well right so with that philosophy one of the things that i love is that i can put pork butts directly on the grate and i don't have to worry about tearing off the bottom layer when i pull them up because of those porcelain coated grates so i'm actually a really big fan of the porcelain coated grates when it comes to low and slow smoking the overall width of this unit is 39 inches, and it's 27 inches deep as well as about 50 inches high, 
And that's an average size for something that's considered a 24 inch smoker. The weight of this smoker is right around 109, 110 pounds. And that means that this is one that you could potentially heft up into the back of the truck and take it with you if you're going over to someone's house and have a smoker that's portable. There are some other smokers that aren't so easy to, to heft around, but this is one I wouldn't hesitate to throw in the back of the pickup, strap it down and take it to a friend's house for a dinner. Now the cooking chamber dimensions, meaning the interior dimensions of the cooking chamber is 19 and a half inches deep by nine inches high by 22 inches wide. So what most people would categorize this smoker as is a 22 inch uh, pellet smoker or 24 inch, depending on how you would look at the way they measure them. That means that the square cooking inches available in this unit is about 380 square inches. And that 380 square inches doesn't seem like a lot, but I can still fit three racks of ribs on here laying down completely side by side, or at least one pack or brisket, if not two, depending on how you put it in here. Now, the finish on the smoker is a double powder coated finish. Now, what does that mean? It means that you have steel all, all across this grill and it's cold rolled steel, but there's a double powder coat on the outside. That double powder coat is going to make it so it's a lot more resistant to moisture and rust and those types of things that the elements are going to attack this grill with. So I actually like the finish on this grill. If I could get stainless steel, I totally would get stainless steel as I have a stainless steel grill in the back that we've had for 15 years. It still looks like the day I bought it. But in this price range for this unit, I'm happy with the double coat on the outside. Now, the door seal is something that we talk about on smokers all the time. Should you modify this smoker by using high temp Permatex and a gasket seal? And my answer to this is probably not on this unit. The, the smokestack doesn't actually have a baffle that's going to actually limit the amount of smoke in and out. And I don't see a lot of smoke getting in, at, in and out around the doors. So this is a unit that I think is made to roll as it is, and I wouldn't worry about modifying it. Now, the longevity of this grill not being of a stainless steel variety is something that we ought to mention. So if you're looking at keeping this grill outside, I would, I would always recommend that you cover the grill. I would buy a cover or fashion some kind of a cover to keep the moisture off as much as possible because this is cold rolled steel and the more that you're actually looking at cold rolled steel in the environment, inevitably rust does want to attack it. So I would say that if you're looking to keep this grill long term, you definitely want to put a cover on it because of the way that it's made and what it's made of. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. All right, back to the content. The Traeger Renegade Pro has a temperature range of 180 degrees on the low side, all the way up to 450 degrees on the high side. Now that's Fahrenheit. So when you're talking about searing, you can actually sear at 450 degrees, but it is an indirect sear. There's no direct sear function on this grill. It's really a true smoker. So if you're looking at going low and slow, you can go as low as 180 degrees. But if you're looking at doing things like cold smoking cheese or some of those other types of smoking activity, my recommendation would be just to leave the grill completely off, buy a smoker tube, a pellet tube, light that up and let, just use the chamber as your smoking chamber. Now, if you're interested in that, we'll put a link in the description below, uh, but that's one of the ways that we smoke cheese here. We don't actually turn the unit on, we just use the chamber to be the smoke chamber. There are two probes included with the unit and they connect directly to the controller itself. You're able to take these probes, put them into the controller, and you actually can see the temperature reading on the probes on the unit. Now remember, this isn't a Wi-Fi unit, so you're not going to get those temperatures reported back to your phone, but you can see them on the grill. And we found that to be extremely handy. There's a nice probe port on the side that you can take the probes through without having to let the lid sit on the probes, which is gonna help your probes last longer, as well as keep that tighter seal to keep the smoke in your grill. There's a pull handle on the side of the unit and it's on the side opposite the wheels so that as you lift it up, the wheels roll on the opposite side. We find that handle to be extremely stable and sturdy and it makes moving the grill around quite easy. On the same side, there's also a grease bucket where the grease slides down that diverter plate and out into the grease bucket. It's on the same side as the pull handle and we found that when we moved the grill around, it was easy enough just to remove the grease bucket to make sure it didn't spill when moving the grill. So it's just a recommendation that we have. If you're gonna be moving the grill around, make sure you take the grease bucket off because we have had it fall off a few times and learn the hard way. 
The dog loved when we spilled the grease bucket, but uh, we didn't love the results afterwards, if you know what I mean. For the assembly of this grill, it took us a little over an hour. It's primarily building the cart and then setting the smoker on top, but it's right around an hour for a total assembly time. Now, onto some of the issues that we had with this unit. We actually kept getting an HER warning with this grill. And an HER warning in the Traeger system means that the grill has been running 500 to 550 degrees for over two minutes. And that's an actual error that keeps your grill from you know, completely lighting up as high as it can go over that 500, 550 degree range. Now, the thing was, I was running at 275 degrees when it was hitting that supposed 550 degrees. And I had been in the grill actually checking the temperature of some pork butts, and I know the grill wasn't running at 550 degrees at the time. Since I know it wasn't running that high, I went ahead and contacted customer support at Traeger, and they asked me a few questions online, and they said, we need to refer you to a local service technician. So White's Ace Hardware here in Indiana was who we referred to, and White's did a fantastic job taking care of us. What they did was they sent a truck out here, they picked up the grill, took it back to their, their store without me having to lift a finger, and they repaired the unit. What they did is they, re they replaced the control board on the unit and then brought it back. I went ahead and decided we'll do a cook on it, threw another pork butt on, and in doing that pork butt, about halfway through the, the cook, probably about five hours in, I lifted the lid to check the temperature and see where the pork butts were in the cook. And as I did, as I had that lid open for about 60 seconds, all of a sudden the HER warning clicked on again and the grill went to auto shut off. So back to customer support, I went. I went ahead and called Traeger back and said, hey, it's acting up again. They said, go ahead and call Ace Hardware again. They sent the truck back out. They took the unit again, took it back to their store. This time they replaced both the controller and the internal air temperature probe and brought it back to the house. When we got it back, I went ahead and did the next three cooks on the unit without a single problem. So I've been really happy with the customer support that Traeger has given us, but I was disappointed in the fact that I needed customer support from the beginning. So I will say that this grill is actually a tank now and that it has all new internals. And I think it's gonna last for a long, long time. Um, the nice thing is that I know I have Traeger support on the back end and they've just proven that they're gonna take care of us for that. Overall thoughts on this grill is that this is a really, really easy to use grill. All you have to do is turn the dial to the temperature that you want, make sure it has pellets, and then walk away. It's gonna maintain that temperature plus and minus 15 degrees, and it's a great, great consistent smoker. Um, is it easy to clean? Yes and no. I mean, it's relatively easy to clean, except for the fact that there's no ash clean out on this unit. So in order to clean out the ash, you have to vacuum the ash out, which means that you have to take the grill grate off, you have to take the diverter plate off, you have to take the uh, actual heat diverter off, you can vacuum out the pellet pot directly, and all of the rest of the grill. And we just went ahead and that's something that we put into our system to do about every three or four cooks, because what can happen is that ash can build up in that burn pot to the point that the actual igniter rod is covered by ash and it'll no longer ignite the pellets that are dropping on top. So we just made a, made a habit of every you know, two, three, three or four cooks, we would go ahead and clean out the entire uh, center. Also, another thing that we did was we went ahead and put aluminum foil on the diverter plate as well. And that aluminum foil on the diverter plate made for super easy cleanup. You could be doing some kind of a really sugary glaze, or you could do a couple of pork butts, or you could do whatever it might be that has a lot of drippings off of it. And all you have to do is take that diverter plate out, take the aluminum foil, ball it up, throw it away, and it looks just like it should. It's completely clean and clear. So I highly recommend aluminum foil on the diverter plate just for ease of cleanup. So the question always is, would I buy this smoker? Well, yes, I actually did buy this smoker, in fact. So what do we primarily use it for? Well, we use it for brisket, we use it for pork shoulder, we use it for candy bacon chicken bites, we use it for smoked chili, twice smoked potatoes, meatloaf, ribs, even tots and fries for the kids. So we cook so many different things on this and it's become one of our go-to grills here at the barbecue lab that we use probably at least two to three days a week. So the question of the day, have you ever used a Traeger pellet grill? And if so, what was your experience? Tell us down in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your experience with Traeger. So why do we do this? 
We review the grills and the accessories of the barbecue world to help you succeed and win your weekend. Our goal is to help you fast forward through the five to seven years of bad gear that we bought personally that kept us from delighting our friends and neighbors and our loved ones with amazing backyard cooking. So our goal is to help you make the best choice for your backyard that's gonna help you succeed and be the pit master that you were destined to be. The way you can support our channel is if you're thinking about buying any of these items, go ahead and click the links in the description below. It doesn't cost you any more than it would if you were just to go buy it straight from Amazon or straight from Walmart or Home Depot or wherever you might buy it, but those brands will share a tiny piece of the profit with us that allows us to go out and buy more gear like this to review for you. So also, we would love to hear what gear you want us to review. Leave us a comment in the comment section below of what gear you want to see us review next. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Barbecue Lab.